guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea, and in today's video, I'm going to be making some custom vinyl labels for my pantry. In a pantry organization video I shared with you a few months ago now, I showed you these glass jars I got from Dollarama to store my pantry items in, like flour and sugar and that kind of thing. These are two of them here. I have some of these shorter ones and then some of these taller ones. And at the time, I just put some duct tape on the jars and called it a day. But now is the time to finally make some pretty labels and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. I'll be using my Cricut to make the labels today. So I'll be showing you how I design everything in Design Space with script lettering and then how I transfer everything to the jars. I also have some of these little spice jars I got at Dollarama and I will be making some labels for these little guys as well. Before we get into the video, I'd love if you would subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And let's get organizing. The first thing I need to do is measure each of these jars and containers so I know how big to make the labels. I just want to measure the part where I think the label should go, so on the front of the jar here. I think I'm going to do 7 centimeters. For these spice jars, I think I'm going to make the label go up vertically this way instead of across just so I can make a larger label. And for these ones, I'm going to try 5 centimeters. I have my Cricut here. This is the Cricut Explore Air 2. I've opened up Cricut Design Space on my laptop here. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a text box. Come over to the left hand column and click on text. And then I'll type in sugar. And I wanna change this font here. So I actually went on to defont.com and downloaded a font, which I've already installed into Cricut Design Space. So I'll go up here to where it says font, click on that and click on system. And I know the font was called good cream. And here it is there. As you can see, it has spaced out these letters very strangely and does not look right at all. For a script font, you really want these letters to be connected. So it would look as if it would if you were writing it out by hand. And there are a number of ways you can do this. To start with, I'm going to decrease the spacing between each of the letters. And I'll go up here where it says letter space and just press the down arrow. And I don't want this U to get too close to the S, so I'm gonna leave that for now. Over here on the right hand corner, you'll see the word ungroup. I'm going to press that. Now I can click on each individual letter and then move it closer together. So I'll start with the G here and I'm just pressing the left arrow on the keyboard or you could also use your mouse. But the nice thing about using the arrows is it keeps it in a straight line so you don't have to worry about it getting off centered or anything. That looks a lot better. It looks more like a script calligraphy font and all the letters are connected. Much nicer. And I think I might want these letters a bit closer to the S, so I will highlight them and then just move them over with the arrows a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good, so I'll select the whole word and group them together. And now I have to make it the size that I need for my jar. I want this to be seven centimeters wide and you can change the settings on your Cricut Design Space to show centimeters or inches. But either way, the size is up at the top here and I will highlight this width size and put in seven and then press enter. And now that's made it the size that I need for my label. Now, even though these letters are grouped together and it looks as if it's one word right now, you actually do need to do one more step. I'll show you what happens if you don't do that and click on make it up in the corner here. You can see the letters are out of order. They're not connected. So I'll press cancel. And what we have to do is press weld. And now the letters are welded together and Cricut knows to cut them out in this way. I'm going to move this up to the corner and then make my other labels. Next up, I'm going to make a label for the brown sugar. And I don't actually want these words on one line. I want them in two. So I'll type brown, then press enter. 
and then write sugar. And with the two lines of text here, this really is a good example of how you need to manipulate the words in order to look how you want it to look because not only is the spacing of the letters all wonky here, but the spacing between the two words is way bigger than I want it to be. We know we can change the letter spacing up here and right next to that is line spacing, which will change the space between the two lines. It is currently at one, and I'll just keep pressing the down arrow until it gets to be about where I want it to. I think that's good for now. And I'm going to also adjust the letter spacing and ungroup these words. So go over to the right here under layers and press ungroup. And now each of the letters are separated. I'm using the arrow key to move these over and I want the word sugar to be a little more centered with the word brown. So I'll select sugar and then use my mouse to drag it over and up a little bit. I think I like it like that. So I'm going to select everything and group it together and then weld it. And now it's time to make this the right size. So again, I'm just gonna go up here to width and change this to seven centimeters. I now have all my labels ready to go. So I am going to press make it. It's kind of hard to see, but all the words are on here on the mat. I'm actually gonna go back and change the color just so it's easier for you to see. Whatever color you make it on here doesn't affect anything at all. It just helps you to remember which color vinyl or any other kind of product into your Cricut when you're cutting. So I'm going to adjust these a little bit. I just feel like they're a little bit too close together. I think that's looking a little bit better. So I'll press continue. And here's where we choose the material that we're going to be using. And I'm using vinyl. So I'll click on browse all materials and then search for vinyl. And I'll choose premium vinyl. Click done. And before we cut anything, first we need a cutting mat. I have this standard grip green one from Cricut, and then I have this black vinyl from Cricut. This is removable vinyl, but if you wanted something more permanent, then you could use the permanent vinyl. That's better if you're planning on washing things like mugs or if things are gonna get wet, like on a coaster. This is all I have and it'll work just fine for it. I'm going to cut off a piece of this vinyl to be the size of the mat here. And that's just because we're gonna be using almost the whole mat, but if you were making something that was only gonna be in one corner, you could cut off a small piece. Then I'll spread out my vinyl and stick it to the mat. What we need to do is load the mat into the Cricut. There are two little knobs on either side here. So you just slide the mat under there and push up against these little roller balls. And you can see this button is flashing. This is the load and unload button. So while you're holding the mat fairly sturdy, press this flashing button. And now the mat is loaded into the Cricut. Now this Cricut button over here is flashing. So we'll press that. And now it's cutting. Now that it's finished cutting, I'll press the unload mat button that's flashing here. And now we can take it out. You can see a little bit of the words there. So now we just have to get them off of here. I'm going to take my weeding tool and scrape away the black background. I'm now cutting all of the words out. I have this clear shelf liner I got at Walmart. This is the Duck brand. You could also use transfer tape. There's lots of different things that people use for this. I'm going to cut off a piece of this. Now I'll peel the backing off of this contact paper and then stick it onto my label. And I'm taking this scraper tool and pressing down 
turn it over and do the same. Now I'm gonna separate this sticky layer from the white layer, but I wanna make sure that the black letters are on the clear part. So you can see if I just start pulling, they're not actually transferring. So I wanna really make sure I'm pressing down on each letter. And if I start to pull up, I can also pull down on the black letters. This is the only kind of sticky contact paper I've ever used. I haven't tried the Cricut brand one or any other one yet. So let me know if you have better success with different kinds or which one is your favorite. As you can see, the W got a little bit messed up there. I just flipped it up with my fingers and then pressed it back down. Here's our label. This is my powdered monk fruit container. I'll line up the label where I want it to be. And now I'll press it on starting in the middle and going out to the sides. I'm using this scraper tool again to really push down and get those black letters stuck on the container. And now it's time to remove this clear part and you can see the letters are staying on there. And if you wanna reuse this contact paper for the other labels, which is what I'm gonna do, just stick it back on its backing here. And this is our first label done. Now I'm gonna try labeling one of these little spice jars. Okay, I lost the dot of the eye in the process, but that's okay. I wanna do this one this way on the spice jar. I think this would look really cute with white lettering, especially to match the lid of the spice jar and to stand out against the spice in the jar. But I only had black for today, so that's okay. We'll have to try that another time. Here are all of my completed pantry labels. I love how they turned out. I think they look so nice and I'm really happy with it. I will note that the smaller the word, the harder it is to weed, especially with the script lettering. So you have to be careful with that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I made all my labels for my pantry. Links to everything I used in today's video will be in the description box below, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. And I would love if you would subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos and give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time.